The Wild Washerwomen by John Newman and Quentin Blake. Once upon a time, there were seven washerwomen. Every day, they went down to the river with their baskets of washing on their heads, and their names were Dotty, Lotty, Molly, Dolly, Winnie, Minnie, and Ernstine, and they were all good friends. When they got to the river, they sorted out the clothes and plunged them in. They soaked them, they soaped them, they pounded them on the stones. They rinsed them, they wrung them, and they spread them over bushes and rocks to dry. They were the best washerwomen for miles, but they were not happy. The owner of the laundry, Mr. Balthazar Tite, was a very mean little man and kept them working from morning to night. Every morning at the crack of dawn, they had to get up and do the ironing before the day's washing arrived. And when it did arrive in the goat cart, Perkin, the delivery boy, would say, I'm sorry, ladies, but it's more than ever today. One morning, as the washerwomen started glumly at the mountain of dirty laundry, they felt that it was really too much. They all sighed, as they looked at the filthy sheets, grubby hankies, horrid socks, grimy nightshirts, messy tablecloths and ghastly towels. Why don't we just leave it? suggested Ernstine timidly. Their faces brightened up immediately. What a marvellous idea, chuckled, chuckled Dolly, flinging a grimy shirt across the room. Why didn't we think of it before? chortled Winnie. And at that, they began to dance. But the door burst open and Mr. Balthazar Tite stepped in with Perkin. Now, now, ladies, he said with a frown. There's work to be done. Then he looked at the great mound of laundry on the floor. Wonderful, he said. There's more than ever. And this made Minnie so angry that she shouted, Let him have it, girls! and the seven washerwomen pushed the mountain of laundry until it collapsed on top of Mr. Balthazar Tite. While he was struggling to get free, the seven washerwomen raced out of the laundry and into the yard. They piled into the empty goat cart, and Dotty grabbed the reins. Cheer up, Linzida, she cried to the goat. The washerwomen were so excited by their escape that they drove the cart right through the town ponds, splashing the clean clothes off the passers-by with muddy water. After that, there was no stopping them. They rode to the marketplace, where they overturned the stalls and set the animals loose. They stopped in orchards and climbed the trees to help themselves to the farmer's fruit. They raced through the hat shops and snatched the hats. They ran into churches and alarmed the local people by swinging on the bell ropes and making terrible noises. The washerwomen were having so much fun that they didn't want it to end. So day after day they went on the rampage and all that washing had made the washerwomen very strong. The people who tried to stop them didn't have a chance. Everyone was terrified of them. Each village built a watchtower so that a villager could shout, Look out, the wild washerwomen are coming, when their goat cart came into sight. In a hut in the forest lived seven woodcutters. They chopped down trees and floated them down the river to the town. When they heard that there were seven washerwomen were coming, they just laughed. We'll see who's afraid, they said. We'll prepare a surprise for them. And the woodcutters decided to make themselves as ugly and as frightening as possible. And they tangled their hair and matted their beards. They smeared mud and soot all over their hands and faces and clothes, and they practised making blood-curdling cries. Soon the seven washerwomen came rattling up the mountain path in the go-cart. As they turned the corner, there, in front of them, was a terrifying sight. Lysander stopped in his tracks, and even the wild washerwomen were about to run away. But then Minnie realised that they were looking at the dirtiest and grubbiest things that they had ever seen in their lives. Come on, girls, she shouted. Remember, you're washerwomen. 
and they leapt out of the cart and grabbed hold of the woodcutters and plunged them in the river. They soaked them and squeezed them and pounded them on the stones. They rinsed them and wrung them and laid them out to dry. And by the time they'd finished, the woodcutters had never looked so clean and shiny, and the washerwomen felt quite proud of their work. In fact, now they could see the woodcutters without their soot and mud. They really rather liked the look of them. The washerwomen never went back to work for Mr. Balthazar Tights. They married the woodcutters, who built them some new log huts to live in. And after that, people who travelled along the mountain path would see them all happily washing and woodcutting and having the time of their lives. The End of The Wild Washerwomen by John Newman and Quentin Blake Here on the Lights Out Podcast Bedtime stories for boys and girls around the world. Good night.